as the nights grow slowly darker and the urge to light a scented candle begins to emerge and the comfort of a warm drink begins to bring that extra little bit more joy. You might find that the urge to curl up under a blanket with a good book begins to emerge from its dusty corner of indoor hobbies that we boxed up for the summer. Perhaps you too are beginning to feel this urge to read, but wait, you think. Where do I even begin? I don't even know what my kind of book is anymore. Or perhaps you've got that great tome sat on your bookshelves collecting dust for years that you occasionally open and read the first page and then put back onto its place on the shelf for another year. Maybe you even say those dreaded words that every bookworm hears from someone else at least once in their lifetime. Reading is just not for me. Well, I believe that reading is for everyone. Reading books is for you. And I believe that you can enjoy the act of reading. So in this video, I wanted to share some tips on how to fall in love with reading or perhaps how to get back into reading if you've fallen out of love with it at some point in your life. I thought I would start with a very brief, like one minute intro about my journey with reading because I feel like that will help you to understand where this video is coming from a little bit better. As a young child, I loved reading. I always had my head stuck in a book. So much so that when I was in primary school, we had these bookshelves outside our classrooms with different levels and you were supposed to read through all of the books in the levels but I read all of the books really quickly to the point where I had to bring my own books into school. I read a lot. When I hit around 15 or 16 my love for books grew even more as I began to find my escape in stories. I didn't have an awful time at school but I also didn't have an amazing time either and being able to get lost in stories was such a light for me in that time of my life. When I went to university, somebody told me that university is the time of your life where you have the most time to read. I found the complete opposite. My days were filled with the required reading for my history degree and between having little time and little motivation, honestly, to read books for fun, the hobby kind of dwindled. Then when I left university and got a job, I went from reading maybe 50 books a year to reading five on a good year. After years of required reading and finding my joy in other interests, I struggled to get past the first chapter of a book. And this was coming from someone who would regularly read at least 50 books a year. Thankfully, this love did come back. And for the last two years, I have fallen in love with books all over again. So these tips that I am sharing are my tips. They are things that I did or that happened to me that helped me to rekindle my love for books. A while ago, I posted a video on five tips for reading better, which was reading tips from C.S. Lewis. However, if you want my tips, the things that I've done in my life, then here they are. Tip number one is read with a friend. Or if you can't read with a friend, join a book club. As I was sitting and thinking about what tips to include in this list, this was the one that came to mind straight away because this honestly was the thing that probably mostly helped me to get back into reading. I was very fortunate that my best friend um, also wanted to get back into reading again and so we decided that we would read a book a month together and discuss it together when we'd read it and for me that was the most motivating and encouraging thing for getting back into reading. So my friend Em and I both have very different reading tastes. We enjoy very different kinds of books. So it was really fun to read what each other recommended or what each other wanted to read. So some months we might read a fantasy book, other months we might read a contemporary novel and we kind of mixed it up each month to try different things. And this was 
brilliant for multiple reasons. One, because it was really motivating to know that I needed to talk about this book at the end of the month with Em. Secondly, it really opened my eyes to new types of books or books that I hadn't read for a while. And thirdly, it made me excited to read. Reading became an activity and a shared activity with a friend and that made it fun and exciting again, which helped me to feel motivated to read on my own as well. So either find a friend who wants to read and pick some books together or if you don't have that try and find a book club um, where you can read with other people i think having other people to a keep you accountable and b make reading fun is so important for falling in love with books tip number two is go to physical bookshops you don't need to buy your books from these physical bookshops but just going to them will spark your love for reading. I had an experience about three or four years ago when I was in a bit of a reading rut and I went into Waterstones and it'd been a while since I've been inside a bookshop and I felt so overwhelmed. I never had this feeling whilst in a bookshop, but I felt overwhelmed, intimidated by all of the books scared that I didn't know where to even begin anymore and this weird sort of displacement of this being a place that had been for me for so many years and suddenly I didn't feel like I fit into it anymore. If that is how you feel when you walk into a bookshop my advice would be to just slowly walk around the bookshop and just scan the shelves particularly the tables where they lay out their recommended books. Just scan them, look for titles that sound intriguing or book covers that look eye-catching to you and read the synopses and read the first pages and just take your time, maybe even dedicate an hour if you can to just walking around the bookshop and doing that. There are so many bookshop and trips where I felt a bit overwhelmed about what to read and doing that has just calmed me and given me, I don't know, ideas of what sort of things I would like to read. You don't necessarily have to pick them up and buy them, but just reading different books and looking at what's on offer can spark your interest in different kinds of books. Tip number three kind of fits in with tip number two, but that is to research books. Research books, look them up, get a Goodreads account, read people's reviews and make book lists. Make lists of books that sound interesting to you. Google books that follow this theme and see what comes up. Read people's thoughts on them. I love watching video lists of people recommending books on certain themes, like even really niche ones such as books to read if you love dogs. I have a list on my phone of books that I've seen recommended in videos and also books that people have recommended to me in the comments of my videos. I keep a list of them so that when I'm in a bookshop, if I see one, I can pick it up and I know what it's about already. It means that when you want to look for a new book, whether that's buying a book or borrowing a book from the library, you have some ideas already in mind. Tip number four is ask yourself, what do I care about? And read books about that thing. For me, it's been really helpful to work out what interests me when I'm picking books to read. It's definitely good to read books outside of your comfort zone and to read books about things that you don't know about already or wouldn't necessarily naturally pick up but I think that when you're looking to get into reading or get back into reading it's really helpful to pick books about things that you are interested in. For me I love fantasy stories, they are the books that make me love stories. I love writing fantasy stories in my spare time and they are just the books that I will go back to when I need a pick-me-up. I've heard so many people say to me that they struggle with fantasy as a Christian because it can be quite hard to find books that feel comfortable to read. It brings me so much joy when I recommend a fantasy book on this channel and somebody who has a faith says to me that 
they feel comfortable reading that and they're really thankful that they found that book. That just brings me so much joy. So alongside my joy and love for fantasy books, part of my interest is in finding fantasy books that feel comfortable for Christians to read. Find what you care about, find what you're interested in and find books about that. And finally, tip number five is always have a book with you. Always have a book in your bag or um, download the Kindle app onto your phone. And whenever you have a spare moment, instead of scrolling on social media, try to read that book instead. I'm not perfect to this one. This is a real struggle for me. I definitely have a little bit of an addiction to scrolling on my phone, not even social media, just scrolling on my phone. If I delete social media apps, which I do fairly regularly, I'll just scroll my photos or I'll scroll, I'll scroll anything. However, when I, when I manage to, it brings me so much more joy to click on the Kindle app and scroll through a book instead. I think this helps you to get into an appreciation for how you spend spare time as well. It can be very easy to fill those spare moments with things that are not meaningful and things that do not bring you joy. And for me at least, filling those moments with books and reading instead brings me so much more fulfillment. Having a Kindle definitely helped me with this because it's so much easier to take around with me. So if I'm in a coffee shop or if I'm waiting for something, I can pull my Kindle out quite inconspicuously and read. And the same with just getting the Kindle app on your phone as well. So I hope that you found at least one of those tips helpful if you are trying to get into reading or get back into reading, or maybe if you already love books and you're just looking to try something new. If you've clicked on this video because you've fallen out of love with books or you just really struggle to enjoy reading, I genuinely and sincerely hope that you will find that love again. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon in the next video.